how creatives clear from right accounts. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about what is business finance. Now, business finance is a term I realize I use a lot and I've not necessarily taken the time to explain what it is. And um, people interpret it in different ways. And there's a lot of aspects in this that can be included under the banner business finance. So I thought I would just spend this week explaining what I mean when I talk about business finance and how you can use that as kind of areas which you may be able to use to improve your business finances. So if we start with the most obvious, the most obvious aspect of business finances for most people is bookkeeping. So the record keeping part of your finances, the day to day, week to week, entries of income and expenses, accounts payable, accounts receivable, along with probably some not quite as frequent recordings for assets, liabilities, particularly non-current ones, and any owner's equity. So any investments you make in the business or any drawings you take from the business. So that's the most obvious one. Bookkeeping is probably one we're all aware of. So the second aspect I call when I talk about business finances is pricing and profit. And I put these two together because really profit comes from pricing with profit in mind most of the time. And again, it's kind of a largely self-explanatory area, but I've had a few conversations recently where profit isn't being included in pricing, or at least not specifically. It's just assumed that within the formula for pricing, there is this magical uh, profit that's going to be generated. And it's not like that. Pricing really is an art, not a science. It's not a specific formula. There are formulas, but those formulas aren't gonna work for all product types. They're not gonna work for all businesses. How do you decide what an hourly rate is that you wanna pay yourself? Does that cover anything other than your time? Lots and lots of questions in pricing and profit. So you really have to consider as well, also the influence of the wider market, your general income streams, and your value proposition. So although it's self-explanatory, there's a lot in pricing and profit, and a lot to look at when you think about improving your business finances. So the third category, well, inventory management, particularly for profit-based businesses, we're looking at completed products, work in progress, and supplies, materials, production materials, um, associated materials as well for packaging or postage, marketing, etc. This is often overlooked in service-based businesses and I think this is generally a little bit of a mistake because there is inventory in a service-based business. Um, whether that is the programs you offer, how many programs do you offer, the freebies you offer, and um, the things that you're involved with, they're part of your business and they make up what you can sell, so therefore they make up your inventory. So inventory management, we really need to focus on ensuring the value from the resources within our business and not reinventing the wheel each time, not continually expanding your supplies, not continually expanding your freebies. If you have freebies that you haven't updated in a while that could use updating, those sort of things. And doing these things really can free up ghost cash and opportunities within the business without necessarily too much more investment of cash or time. Now we're talking about cash and no finance, business finance will be completed with that mention of cash flow. So after the owner, the owner's time and the owner's efforts, cash is probably one of the most precious resources in any business. Now generally we can only pursue an opportunity if we're able to provide the cash or slow the flow of cash while we focus our attention elsewhere. So if you're working on something and you want to switch to something else, if you have income coming in from the first thing, you need to be able to afford to that income to slow down while you focus on the new thing. So whether that's signing up for a big event, attending a conference, or creating a new product or program, we can only do that if we have the cash flow within the business to maximize the opportunity. Then we would obviously move on to budgets and targets. And just like a business plan or a marketing strategy, a budget and targets is a tool that you can use to measure direct and assess the cost of your business. It can sometimes be eye-opening to realise that 30% after taxes, to make that on a weekly basis, you have to sell 33 of those $50 items. So that works out to be about $500. And, you know, if that's your weekly rent, you need to be selling 33 items or 33 programmes to make that weekly rent if your profit margin is 30%. And you can get that sort of information from doing a good budget and a budget analysis. They can also help you plan for new products that you might want to introduce or guidelines around investments that you might want to make or even what 
from your income that you could afford to pay yourself. All come from budgets and targets. Now we are getting through these and the next one for me is business optimization. And again, this is a huge aspect within business finance. Lots of moving parts, options, systems, processes that all can be quite hard to figure out individually and then we put them all together and we can end up with a system that really isn't streamlined it isn't optimized and it takes up more time than it potentially should or could so one system comes can do the lifting of four systems so you can have one system that runs bookkeeping inventory management tax and lead tracking so if you work with stockets so you have client leads you know you can actually have one system that cope with them we can combine bookkeeping with document management so if you have contracts that need to be signed lots of ways we can do that but individually it can seem really overwhelming so the last one really in my list and it's not a specific and it kind of permeates through your entire business is your attitudes and behaviors and this isn't an area of business finance you're going to find in most business finance books but i think this is one of the most important aspects because of the impact it has on our business performance a bookkeeping system isn't going to make you break your business although if unmanaged obviously you can burn through cash inventory management isn't necessarily going to make or break your business poor pricing isn't necessarily going to make or break your business it can obviously if you're selling items at a loss but not immediately not as much as the attitudes and the behaviors of the business owner and that's why I think this is so important so why don't I use the term accounting well for me accounting just isn't so straightforward it's kind of it captures aspects of all of my list of business finances it's really a catch-all term for lots of different processes and it's quite technical so there's management accounting there's financial accounting there's tax accounting there's forensic accounting you know there's lots of different types of accounting but the specific understanding of those i find is out of reach of most non-finance people so it's much easier to talk about business finances and the specific areas so although most people would be aware of the tax not not managing the tax aspects of your business is probably one of the quickest ways to get yourself into trouble but not paying attention to all the areas and not looking at how you can make those areas work together really can get you as an owner and your business into trouble so i hope this was a helpful list of the areas to look into i did do a blog a couple of weeks ago a video as well on 10 things that you could pick in your business to improve your business so i hope you go and check that out if you've enjoyed the video please give me a like or a thumbs up or a comment i always appreciate it you can subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and i hope you'll see me in another video